Hello everyone. We've been talking about uh, control abstractions uh, and in particular functions. So uh, in the last lecture we talked about uh, subprograms and the different uh, parameter passing methods. And now we are going to talk briefly about uh, higher order functions. So what is a higher order function? Well, here's a definition. A function is higher order when it accepts functions as parameters or returns another function as its result. So there are, there are two possibilities. Uh, when it accepts function as parameters or when it can return a function as a result. So languages with function as parameters are fairly common. And this is actually something that one can, uh, for example, uh, do in, uh, in C or C++, send function as uh, parameters. Uh, but languages that allow functions to return on other, uh, other functions, that, are, that is less common. And actually, th this latter um, characteristic is one of the fundamental mechanisms of functional programming languages, which we will um, discuss later. So let's first look at the uh, function as parameters. And we're going to consider the general case, uh, the, the following general case, uh, where we have a language with functional parameters in nested environments, meaning it can have nested blocks, and the ability to define functions at every nesting level. So let's look at the following uh, working example here. We have a block uh, starting, kind of a main block starting here with a local variable, a declaration of a local variable int x is equal to 1. And this particular block that opens here and uh, extends f to the whole code and ends, ends here at the bottom. Now inside this main block, we have uh, definitions of two functions. The first function is f and the second function is g. Um, now the first function takes, uh, has a formal parameter y, which is of the type int, and the function itself f returns an integer, and in the body of its code, it just simply does return x plus y. And y, as I said, is the formal parameter, but x is then a non-local reference. And what reference is it? Well, if we're, if we're discussing static scope, the x is defined in, an, in a closing block, which would be the x up here in the, in the outer block. Now, the second function is g. And this is uh, something uh, new to us, the syntax here. Well, we're, we're working here with a kind of a, a pseudo language. But what this means is that the function g takes a function as a parameter. And that function is called h here, takes an integer as a formal parameter and returns an int. So the function g takes another function as a parameter and in the, in the header, we can see that that function, which has the name h, um, takes an integer as a parameter and returns int. Now, the function g itself returns an integer also. So what does the body of g do? It, has, uh, it declares a local variable x, gives it the value 2, and then returns a value by calling uh, its function parameter, meaning calling h with the value 3 and then adds x, x to it. Now, then the main block opens a, an, another nested block, declares a local variable x is equal to 4, and then calls g with f. So here we can see f is a reference to this function here. So we're calling g with a function uh, parameter. Now, when we look at this example, uh, 
we can see that there are really two possibilities for selecting the non-local environment to use when executing a function f invoked using a formal parameter. There are two possibilities for selecting the non-local environment. So notice that uh, because uh, f has a reference to a non-local, which is this x here, we have to be able, at the time of the call here, to select the non-local environment that should be used when f will be executed. And f will be actually executed inside g through this call here, h uh, of 3. So, the two possibilities are to use the environment that is active at the time when the link between h and f is created. And this is called deep binding policy. Let's look at it again. When the link between f, which is the function itself, and h, which is the formal parameter. Uh, so when the compiler sees the uh, uh, the call to G here, assuming that we're doing static scope, it can, it will associate the link between F and H, and at that point it could uh, select the local environment. So that is called deep binding. Another possibility is to use the environment that is active when the call of F occurs, and this is called shallow binding. So the call to f appears inside g. The call to f does not appear here because we, ju we are calling the function g here and we're just passing f as a parameter. So we are associating f with the formal parameter h here. But inside g, uh, we call the function f through this formal parameter h and at that point we could also select the uh, non-local environment to use for this function f. And this would be called shallow binding. So it's at, the question is, is it at call time or is it a kind of a, at a link time when the link between the uh, actual parameter in f and, and h is uh, created. So deep binding versus uh, shallow binding. And uh, when we are using static scope, then we are really just using deep binding. That's, uh, that is uh, all common languages really that use static scope also use a deep binding. So if we, because that's just, uh, when, when we, are using static scope, we're saying that we can, uh, just by looking at the program text, we can uh, uh, find the reference to non-local variables just by looking at the program text itself. For, for example, when we're looking at the function f here and we see a non-local reference to the variable x, we can, by looking at the program text, see that the x is uh, declared in the um, uh, outer block, in the enclosing block. And that this, uh, this methodology makes sense, or deep binding makes sense in the context of, of static scope. When we see this uh, uh, call to g and we are passing the function f as a parameter, it is at that point that we can associate uh, the non-local variable to use uh, for this function f. Just by looking at the program text, we can see that f should have a static chain pointer to the block, to its enclosing block, just by looking at the program text. So all common languages that use static scope also use deep binding. So if we look at this example under static scope and deep binding, what happens when we call h of 3, 
we are calling the function g, we pass the function f as a parameter, uh, g has its own local variable x which has the value 2 and then we call the function h which is actually uh, called to the function f and we do f of 3. What does f of 3 return? y is the formal parameter so y has the value 3 and we return x plus 3 and what is x? x is 1. We are in static scope and we are using deep binding. So we get the value 4 here. So h of 3 returns 4 and then we add x to it. What x is this? Well this is not a non-local reference, this is a local reference to its own local x. So we get 4 plus 2 which is equal to 6. So the x in the body of f when it is called using h is the one in the outermost block. The question was what is this x here? It's the one in the outermost block or the enclosing block. Now if we ha are using dynamic scope, and let's assume we are doing deep binding, then the call to H03 returns 7. So we are using dynamic scope uh, and deep binding. So deep binding means that we are using the environment uh, which is alive when we associate F with the formal parameter. So what is the environment which is alive at that point? Well it's the environment inside this block so x here has a value 4. So when we call g with f and we call we execute the call f of 3 then the x inside f is actually the x inside this block here. Remember this is dynamic scope so we're not using at the program text, we're looking at the what is uh, what, what is alive when the program is running, what association is alive when the program is running. And if you're using deep binding, it's this uh, block here, the x inside this block where it has a value 4. So we get 4 plus 3, which is 7. And then we add x to it, but x is local, so that's 2, so we should get 9, so g returns 9. So the x in the body of f, when it is called using h, is the one local to the block in which the call of g of f occurs. So when this call occurs, g of f, it is, it's the x that is local in that block that is used inside f here. So this was uh, dynamic scope and deep binding, and then the last possibility is dynamic scope and shallow binding. Uh, and then the difference is, if we're doing shallow binding, then uh, the environment to use is not uh, uh, associated until we make really the call. Not when we call G, but when we call F. So when we do f of 3 here, then inside f, the x being referenced, is then the one inside g. So that's, that has the value 2. So we do 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, and then we add 2 to it and we get 7. So x in the body of f at the moment of its call through h is the one local to g. So inside f, the non-local x is inside is the one declared inside g. So if you're using shallow binding, it's the one inside g. If you're using deep binding, it's the one inside the block here. But when we we're using static scope we're always using deep binding. It's only in under dynamic scope where, the, where there are really two possibilities, using deep binding or, or shallow binding. Uh, now, let me actually see if I can um, run this.